Our text for today comes from Isaiah chapter 51. Listen again to these words. My righteousness draws near, and my salvation has gone out, and my arms will judge the peoples. The coastlands hope for me, and for my arm they wait. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So for those of you who actively use social media, those of us, I should say, much of our time is spent usually uploading posts, maybe going through our profiles, but the majority of the time we're on social media, we're not looking at our own stuff, we're usually looking at other people's stuff. We're doing it by scrolling our feeds. Now, maybe if you have a phone, you're using your thumb. If you have an iPad or a tablet, you're using one of your forefingers. But on a computer, of course, you have a mouse scroll wheel that you use. You spend a lot of time just scrolling. Now, for those of you who regularly scroll your feeds, you probably notice something in those feeds. My posts tend not to show up in your feeds. And you know why that is? It's because I don't post anything. I, in fact, I actually have two active social media accounts. I have a Facebook and an Instagram, but I rarely log into them. I rarely go on to them because personally, I don't feel much of a desire to upload or to even scroll my feeds. But you know, that wasn't always the case. There was a time for several years, especially in high school and college, when I would spend hours and hours hours of my day scrolling my feeds. And when I wasn't scrolling my feeds, I was already thinking of the next post, whether it was a picture or a text that I was going to put up. So when I got back on Facebook, I could then upload it. Now for a recent sermon, a past sermon now, I actually did log back onto my Facebook account and I was looking for an old picture for that sermon. And it was great. It was for the first time in a long time I opened up and looked at all of my old pictures that I uploaded because I used to upload a lot. And as I scrolled through some of those old pictures uh, going through my, my posts, I chuckled a bit because I thought, wow, some of these pictures here, I spent so much time trying to frame the perfect picture. I stressed myself out. I worried myself just so I could get that perfect picture snapshot. So some of those pictures were an attempt to create the perfect snapshot, but rather than sit here and embarrass myself and agonize and tell you about the stress I went through, why don't I show you what that stress looks like through a couple in a video? Someone wants to hit the front lights for me, please. It's so insane. This is there's nothing better than this, right? This is the greatest. Unbelievable. Look at this. I can't believe I <gasps> Madison Marie. Will you marry me? Babe. Oh, you hired a photographer, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's right. Yeah. I am so I don't do you mind actually coming a little bit closer? I just, I don't know if it's going to share that well, if it's like what? so far back. Madison Marie, will you marry me? This is, do you mind if we just switch spots so that the cameras? Madison Marie, will you marry me? Oh my, my hair is up and I didn't realize. Do you mind if you get the skyline in the background? Madison Marie. Cut. Sorry, I don't like my middle name. Uh, can I take a look at that? I just want to see if it's, I wanted this to be a surprise, but at least you could have given me a hint. I don't look good in any of these. Okay. I'm sweating right now, and this can't be good for my complexion. What are you talking about? <sighs> the lighting is like really harsh. It probably looked like a Picasso painting. It's. <sighs> Cloud wise, what are you thinking? More? And yeah. See, when, you, when you turn around, is right. it already going to be open? Yes. Madison Marie. I'm already wearing it. Oh, wait, all right, take it. Okay. Give me the ring back and oh. then we'll start from the top. Okay, okay. okay. I read a blog, the perfect time for engagement is like 5 to 5.30. I'm trying to do something fun for you and you ruin it. Ruin? Every. Oh my gosh, okay, I let's don't try. know if I can even do this anymore. All right, here we go. Well, you're going to be that, you're going to be turned around. Right. Anyway, so I'll just start right. on my knee. Right, Thank you. You got a double chin in this one. Switching things up, we're going to have a camera guy here, sound guy right here, John, continuity stake, right knee. I'm going to go left hand. This could be bigger, right? Can you Photoshop that? As soon as he opens the box, we're gonna have a sweeping zoom motion and then coming all the way up, revealing the beautiful skyline. I'm going to say yes, 
and it's gonna be great. All right, from top. So then I'm gonna either go here or here. What do you okay, think? How about, or we could go this way. Right? I feel like no one sees me though, because my face is pointed That's fine. out. No one needs to see your face. <laughs> say it a little bit more like you believe in it. Like do it. How would I say it? Marrying you would be hashtag relationship goal. Who says that? You will! <sighs> Rolling! I just want it to be like how they do it in the movies. I don't know. I'm just not feeling the production value in this. Production? What what do you want from this? Oh, uh, I don't know. First thing that comes to my mind, La La Land. They didn't even get married. Spoiler alert. Cut. Madison's engagement. Take 43. Great. Hurry. First positions. Put that somewhere. First positions? What? Babe, it's so beautiful. Yeah. Look at all these likes. The perfect snapshot. 42, 44, 43 takes. They got it. They got it. So when I talk about a perfect snapshot, I'm talking about a snapshot with several things. And for one, the perfect snapshot has everything in it we want. Perfect snapshot has everything in it we want. And a great example of this would be a family Christmas photo. I did actually jump back on Facebook and look through some old pictures of ones that I could pull up. And of course, I pulled up a recent Christmas photo. And for us, this was a perfect family photo. And here's why. Notice how all the people we want in the picture are there. We have from left to right, we have my mother, my brother-in-law, my sister, myself, Bridget, and my father. Everybody for Christmas we want for Christmas is in the shot. And not only that, since Christmas is normally spent at my parents' house, it's taken in my parents' house. But it wouldn't be a Christmas picture unless, of course, there is a Christmas tree in it. So, of course, the Christmas tree gets a spot in the back. We had to frame it so you could see at least the star, maybe the top of the tree. It's a smaller, it's a smaller living room. But, of course, as well, you see, we're dressed up because, of course, on Christmas, we go to church in the morning. And so we wanted to, you know, show that that's an active part of our lives. So Christmas, the, or should I say the perfect snapshot, has everything in it that we want. But also a perfect snapshot, a second reason it's perfect is because it has nothing in it we don't want. Has nothing in it we don't want. And I'm going to go back to the picture here. Notice how nobody's frowning in the picture. Nobody wants to be sad on Christmas. We all want to be joyful. So there's no frowning. And you'll notice how the camera angle is actually tilted up a little bit, and that's intentional because there's probably cats wandering around on the floor. We didn't really want them in the picture. Or there's actually some leftover wrapping paper because we opened on Christmas Eve. This was taking Christmas Day. We didn't want the wrapping paper in the picture because it doesn't look good, you know? Usually we have it cleaned up by then. I don't know if it was this time. So a perfect snapshot has everything in it we want, nothing in it we don't want. But there's something about this photo. You know, I remember taking this, and I remember how challenging it was to, to take it because if you saw the photos before this, a bunch of us could not stop laughing. We would just laugh before the photo was taken. So I actually have a few shots still in my phone from this. Uh, you see some people who are laughing, and then some people who are just, you know, with their arms crossed, they're getting kind of impatient. And then other people are going just to adjust the camera angle, and it's, it's great. But it took us, after just a little bit of stress, to finally frame that perfect snapshot. Now, I anticipate most of us have been in some family Christmas photos. And so you can probably relate to my family stress or maybe even some of the emotions from that hopefully still engaged couple. But isn't it telling that most of us are still willing to undergo stress just for that perfect snapshot? Think about it. Why is the perfect snapshot worth it? And this brings us actually to the third point. A perfect snapshot will temporarily satisfy. A perfect snapshot will temporarily satisfy. See, in the, in the video, the girl was willing to undergo stress to satisfy her desire for likes on social media. Not sure she got enough, to be honest, though. And, on our, and as for my family Christmas photo, our family sought to satisfy our want for a positive memory of that year's Christmas. And we finally got it after so many pictures but next month is December again, and we're going to have that desire for another picture. And then also probably next year, and then the year after that. 
because one photo won't satisfy for every year. So perfect snapshots will only satisfy temporarily, maybe. Let's actually stay on that word, temporary. You see, Isaiah actually has a few things to say to tell us about things that are temporary. And this is verse 6a, the first part of verse 6. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment. Look up at the sky, he says. Look up. You'll see that that earth is not, the sky is not going to be there forever. Okay, now look down, he says. Look down at the earth and you'll see it's going to vanish like smoke. The world, the world is temporary. And because the world is temporary and perfect snapshots are temporary, well, therefore, temporary snapshots must be of the world. Now, some of you might be thinking, wait a second, Pastor. I think the reason we actually capture videos of these moments and pictures is because we're supposed to keep them forever. Even if that moment passes, we can pass it through uh, the pictures through generations and they can see that snapshot. Well, true, but whoever said that the picture just has to be the perfect snapshot? Why can't the whole Christmas break be the snapshot? Why can't the vacation up north be the whole snapshot? That experience of it, think about it. Just look at the, I'm going to go back to my list on this projector. Look at this list. Think about that perfect vacation. It has everything in it we want. It has everything in it, or it has nothing in it we don't want. And, well, it's supposed to satisfy, at least for that moment. It's supposed to. So this brings me, then, to a final point. But before I do, just a question for this. How often do we spend our time striving for that perfect vacation? Striving for that perfect Christmas. How many months and how much stress and how much anxiety do we pour into? And then we actually hit it and we're still anxious, afraid that something's going to go wrong. And we put all of our hope in it. Because we believe that we have to have perfection or else we are going to have a disappointing Christmas or a disappointing Thanksgiving. And so therefore, let me tell you what a, the fourth thing that a perfect snapshot is with all of that in mind. The perfect snapshot is worldly salvation. Let me be a little more clear. The perfect snapshot is the pursuit of a perfect vacation, is the pursuit of a worldly salvation. Hopefully, it'll satisfy. Hopefully, it'll give us everything we want. But the more we pursue it, you'll find it's much harder to see a different salvation, God's salvation. And I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to show you and read for me the second part, or, or I should say actually the third part of verse 6, where Isaiah talks about this salvation. He says, but my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. My salvation, God's salvation will be forever. So this is what Isaiah introduces us to. And if we go back further in the text, I don't have it up here. We actually learn in verse 5 what that salvation, how it goes out to us. Isaiah writes, verse 5, my righteousness draws near. My salvation has gone out and my arms will judge the people. The coastlands, they're waiting for you and for my arm they wait. So God's salvation, I'm going to go back to our list. So God's salvation, well, it actually checks, I would say, the first three bullet points for the most part. God's salvation has everything in it that we want. I would even say that we need. It also has nothing in it that we don't want. We're talking sin. We're talking disappointment. We're talking fear. We're talking suffering. And here's the last point. This is where it's a different. God's salvation doesn't temporarily satisfy. No, it eternally satisfies. It is eternal. But you know, it's very hard to grasp this whenever our eyes are so focused on our perfect worldly salvation. It's hard to have an eye open for God's salvation. But here's the thing. God's salvation can actually be present at Christmas. It can be present this week at the Thanksgiving table. It can be present at our next vacation. And even as you go home for lunch today, it can be present. But receiving God's salvation is not like, like trying to build it. And the way that we learn to receive that salvation in all moments, well, 
we get an example of this. And it's actually in a not so perfect snapshot. It was actually a pretty gruesome and bloody picture. It was a picture of Christ. You see, we talk about this salvation going out to us. And the only reason that salvation went out was because of a judgment. A judgment that was done by the arm of God, or I should say the arms. You know, so many of us think, you know, we think of arms, we think of strength, arms that are going to fight. But that's not what these arms did. These arms judged the world by surrendering. These arms surrendered themselves to his captives, to sinners, to people that stretched those arms out to a cross and put nails through them. Arms that surrendered so that salvation could go out, so that righteousness could be received, so that judgment could be done for all those who are in him. That's how salvation came to us. Surrender. So how do you receive salvation at the dinner table? How do you receive salvation in vacation? Maybe it's a need to surrender when things don't go right. Okay, for Thanksgiving, maybe the turkey was in the oven too long. For Christmas, maybe you can't get that one string of lights to turn on on the tree. No matter how many plugs you switched around, you can't get that wrapping paper to go on just right. But who said it had to be ruined? Why can't we just surrender and thank God for what we do have in those moments? Thank God for the time we get to get away, for the family who is there. And not only that, when we savor and thank God for those moments, we can even look in and say, but God, I know you have something even better than this dis allegedly disappointing moment. You have an eternal salvation that will satisfy. So we can receive these moments, the Christmas, Thanksgiving, we can receive them with grace, with joy, not disappointment. Because that is a gift from God. Let us receive those as gifts and surrender our perfect idea of what that's meant to be. And then we don't have to live in anxiety. We don't have to live in fear of things going wrong. We just live in the salvation that we are, God is preparing for us to receive. Amen. We stand for the offertory.